Hey guys, my name is Pastor Greg. I'm the youth pastor here at Lunar Redenta. And in light of everything that's going on, I want to make sure you guys understand the plan for the youth ministry here at the church. We're going to be doing online services and they're going to be growing week by week. And as long as everything is still going on, we want to make sure that you guys are still fed spiritually. So every week, you're going to be hearing a message just like this one every Friday night at 6 o'clock. So sit down, grab your family, grab your phone, whatever you need to do to, to be fully concentrated on this message and put this time apart just for you. I hope you guys are doing awesome. I hope you guys are doing well. Just know that me and Arlene are praying for you guys. We love you guys. We miss you guys. Take care and enjoy this message. guys last time we left off we started a series called no days off it was right during spring break and i know it was about a week and a half ago that we started and i wanted to continue just the second part of that series because this is the issue was and the point of the series was talking about having no days off as a christian having no days off as a follower of jesus christ and so we want to continue that series just a little bit longer just so you can understand that even in isolation we can still follow jesus and even in isolation we can still disciple we can still tell the world about jesus we have so many different ways to do it and we're going to talk about it today right there where you are will you bow your head with me let's pray father we just thank you god for everything you're doing I ask you, Lord, to just be with us, Father God, as we go through this message. God, that this may not be a message for me, Father God, but for you. Lord, that your words come upon my lips and I may speak what you want me to say. God, be with us. We know it's a very hard time. But God, we, are, we have faith in you. And that gives us so much hope. Bring us joy. Bring us peace. Help us be responsible, God, what we need to do. And God, that this message, Lord, fall on good soil. Be with us, God. And you just got to pray. Amen. Let's read our verse real quick. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we're starting in verse 1. If you remember last time we went to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we actually talked a little bit more about the end road that Paul had, the ending that Paul had, and the last message he gave the world from his writings that we have. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go a little bit before what we just read last week. We're going to go into it just a little bit more. But if you could go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and in chapter, verse 1, it reads like this. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Verse 2 says, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, and great with great patience and instruction. I want to tell you guys a story. There was a time when I was 12 and I was approached by a brother to learn how to play bass. At the time, our church had a strong band. I had our church had a strong worship ministry, right? We had a strong bass player, a strong guitar player. Everybody was, was in their place. So whenever they offered to teach me, I was like, sure, why not? I'm not going to be playing any soon, but it's okay. Let me learn how to play. All right, so I was learning, and I had no idea what I was doing. I, I had to be told the note, the next note during a song, and the brother would, would actually start a song, and the brother would tell me, he's like, go here, and then go here, go here during the song. And there were times he was screaming at me across about 10 feet from us, trying to, trying to teach me how to play bass during service. That's the way the times were. That's what we needed to do, right? And so I thought it was cool because none of my friends knew how to play instruments. I know there was band and everything, but none of them knew how to play any mainstream instruments. And I thought it was like the best thing in the world. I was like, okay, I can do this, right? No one else does this, right? And so uh, a couple times though, I would mess up. I would, I would play the wrong note and I would make it sound really bad. And so back then I thought myself as an eight out of 10. I was, I was that good. I was like, I can do this. I don't understand what's going on. I'm still learning, but I'm, I'm getting it. I'm doing good. And every time I finished, I'll get off stage and the brothers would tell me, you're doing a good job. You're doing awesome, right? Of course they were doing it in Spanish, of course. But now, I've grown up and matured and I've understood how to play bass more. I know the mechanics a little bit more. I would honestly rate myself back then a one out of 10. I was so bad. I didn't have the skill yet, right? One thing I did was, was, was that I kept going though. And that's what I understood now from, back, from, from this point of view, from, from so many years later, looking back then, I understand that now, that those brothers were telling me, you're doing a good job, not because I was playing bass, but I was doing a good job because I was willing to do what God wanted me to do. It was something huge. And I, I tell you this story because today's message is to the young person who wants to learn how to preach, to the young person who wants to learn how to play an instrument, to the young person that wants to go and be a missionary, to wants to be a disciple. 
right? The one, the young person who wants to do ministry work. And I'm not just talking about full-time ministry. I'm talking about living life as a Christian. I'm talking about living life day to day, no matter the situation, learning to, to, to love Christ and to teach others about Christ. This message is for you. Now, if you remember last week, again, I'm talking about no days off. We remember how, how this letter, 2 Timothy, was Paul's last letter chronologically ordered, right? Uh, he was ready to turn his ministry uh, in, and he was passing it on to a young pastor named, uh, named Timothy, right? And so his, he says the words, I have fought the good fight. He was ready to turn in his ministry and was passing it on to a young, a young pastor named Timothy. He says these words, as we talked about it last week. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. We spoke last time about how this was, an, uh, this was an intense man. He was very passionate about what he did. And for him to say these words is something very, very, uh, something very intense that we have to take note of. Because he went from saying that he was very passionate about preaching and he would, he would do all these different things for the Lord. And then he got to a point to say, I have finished the course. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. Paul was the man who God used to write half of the New Testament. He planted and raised many churches in this time and, and all to serve Jesus. And he, he went back to these churches many times and he wrote letters to these churches many times in order for them to stay the course. And for a man so passionate about Jesus, so fanatic for the Lord and so intense for God, for him to say, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith, not that he was giving up, but he was passing it on to a young preacher. He was passing it on to the next generation, to the next one, the you got next generation. Today, we're going to talk about this last passage that Paul gave Timothy, this last paragraph. It's, important, uh, it's an important message because it's a transgenerational message. That means it goes from generation to generation to generation. And it's why we're here today. It started back then and it's still going today. Now, Paul says, 2 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 1 says, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead and by, by his appearing and his kingdom. I love how Paul always sets up his messages. He always, it's almost like a courtroom, right? He's addressing the courtroom and he's about to have a, he, he sets it up, he has a base. He says, just listen to what I'm about to say. In this case, he uses some strong words, right? He, for what he's about to say, he says the words, I solemnly charge you. This phrase carries a load of responsibility. It's a phrase that says, I give you the responsibility. I give you the authority. I give you the weight. I give you the burden. I'm giving it to you with the deep sincerity. I charge you, is what Paul said. Understand that Paul at this time in his life was ready to pass on the baton. He was ready for the next person to step up and do the work of the Lord. This weight, this weight heavy on his heart to say that he was what he was about to say. I could just imagine. Something, think about yourself and how passionate you are about, your, you are about something, that this, that this thing defines you. And literally, you're at the end of the string, you're at the end of the line, you say, I'm about to pass this on to someone else. And I've been doing this for so long in my life, and I need, I need to pass it on to someone else. We see a lot of great preachers and a lot of great pastors are doing this today within our churches, and they're doing a very good job of it. They're passing on the ministry on to the next generation so it can keep growing. If you're listening, don't be afraid to ask to learn. Don't be afraid to ask, as like, Pastor, I want to do this. Teach me. Disciple me. Mentor me. Don't be afraid to say those words because I promise you, they will do their best to disciple you. They will do their best to mentor you. They will do their best to teach you what they know. He says, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead and by his appearing in his kingdom. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus. When I was younger, my brothers and my cousins would always like to have sleepovers at each other's houses. Now, we got smart when we asked for permission. Right? We would always ask in the presence of each other. 
What that means is that whenever I wanted my cousin to come spend the night at my house, he would bring me along and in my presence, he would ask his mom, making sure I understood her reaction. Remember, I saw her reaction to see if there was joy or there was she was mad or she said no or whatever. But the fact that I was there when my cousin asked his mom if he could come spend the night at my house changed the whole story. It sweetened him up and said, well, okay, that's fine. Right? She, and it, it, was, it was a whole different story. Paul says that I, he goes, I solemnly charge you in the name, in the name of God. Well, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus. Right? He's putting a responsibility. Right? He, he, in other words, Paul was telling Timothy in the presence of one, the one in authority. Right? Paul was telling Timothy in the presence of the one Timothy was going to answer to. I'm not just asking you because it's because of me. No, I'm asking you because I answered to someone and I want you to answer him to, to him too. I, I point all this out because of what Paul says next. I hope you're paying attention. I hope you understand that what Paul was about to say next is important. He says, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, says, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and the God and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. And then he says this. This is verse 2. Very simple, very simple words, but he starts it off like this. He says, preach the word. Can y'all say that? Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. I charge you to preach the word. Paul writing to the young Timothy tells him to preach the word. The word preach in this context literally means to herald as a public crier, especially when it comes to the divine truth. In other words, to simply speak truth to the public. In other words, to simply speak truth to the public. In most circles, we call this person preacher, or we might call them pastor. I charge you to preach the word, Paul told Timothy. I give you the burden and the responsibility to publicly, I give you the burden and responsibility to publicly speak the word, preach the word. The word is in reference to the word of God, our Bibles, those books. Now, there's a, there's a picture that was going viral a couple days ago that actually one of my friends posted up on the internet, and I saw it, and I was like, wow, he had so many shares, so many likes. He went to Walmart, and when he went to the grocery, to get groceries and stuff like that, but he went to the aisle that they sold Bibles, at Walmart of all places, and he saw the place almost empty, that people were hungry for the word. You're talking about a digital generation here, and yet we still go and get a physical Bible. That is good news. The word is in reference to the word of God. But then let me say this is the Bible. We are to speak publicly about the Bible. We are to preach the word of God. This book that is so sought after nowadays has a frame, is a framework to our lives as Christians. And even people who aren't Christian can understand and get rules from this book. But the thing is, I want you to understand that this book, when we, sit, when we look after it and we read it, we shouldn't be looking to better ourselves, but we should be looking for Jesus Christ in it. God calls us to speak of his word. Even from the Great Commission in the Gospels, Mark 16, 15 says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. This is our charge that we ought to preach the word. This is our charge that we ought to preach the word, right? We live in an age when it's so easy to get an audience in front of us. You know what I'm talking about. Even now, I'm looking at a camera. You're watching through your screen, whether on the TV or a little mobile device or your iPad, whatever you're looking at. It's so easy to get an audience nowadays. You ever heard of going live? I'm sure you have. You ever heard of posting the stories? I'm sure you have. You guys know exactly what it is because that the people that see you, whether it's one person or a million people, it is so easy nowadays to get an audience. You're privileged. Take advantage of it. I get it. Some of you guys don't like being in front of the camera. It's different. You don't like showing off yourself, which is fine. But you are within a circle of people that God has put in, in, in your life. A circle of family and friends right now that God has put in your life. And God's telling you right now to preach the word to them. If you're isolated at home, quarantined at home, 
Talk to your brothers. Talk to your sisters. Talk to your mom. Talk to your dad. If you live with your grandparents, talk to them. If they are the most decorated preacher in the world, still speak to them. If they are the most famous Christian in the world, it doesn't matter. Go and preach to them and tell them about Jesus. Trust me, they need to hear it and they still love to hear it. They will never tire of the gospel. Even if your parents love Jesus and have gone to church their whole lives and they're sold out for Christ, I promise you, if you go right now and tell them about Jesus, they will love it. They will be blessed. Go and preach the word to your family. Pastor Greg, they never listen. What if they, what if they do this? What if they do that? What if they don't talk to me anymore? Listen. Try. Paul says to try, to endure the hardships. Paul says to keep going. Paul says to keep the faith. It's not easy, but you gotta keep going. Keep the faith, finish the course, and fight the good fight. Paul says to Timothy, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, and with great patience and instruction. Now I promise you, this season is very different for us. Some of us, we miss school, which is funny, because when we first heard of all the extended spring break, I remember all of you guys who were in my youth were saying, yes, we were excited. But now you're at a point with, I, want, I wish I could go back to school. The season's different. Seniors, it is very different for you guys, and I feel for you. We are definitely out of season. We are definitely in a place where it feels like we can't get together anymore and talk about the word. We can. But the Bible says to be ready in season and out of season. We're out of season right now and we gotta be ready. And in this moment that you have so much time in your hands and you're getting so bored at home, learn to study the word of God. Learn to pray to him at your home. Learn to worship him at home. And I know exactly what I'm talking about. Before all this stuff happened, the only place that you would go and worship and read your Bible, the only place you would go and pray is here in the youth chapel. In this building, in this place, these four walls. And I always told you, go practice this at home. Go practice this at home. You come to a point in your life where you are forced to be at home and you have the only place that you can worship God and the only place you can pray to God and the only place you can study the word of God is at home. Do this now. Build the habit now because I promise you the day that this is, all this is over and it will be over, the day that all this is over, we're going to have a good foundation to be at home worshiping God. We're going to be at home praising the Lord. We're going to be at home studying the word of God. Good habits built in. Already. Do it now. Build habits now. The only way we were able to preach the word is if we know the word. Did you get that? The only way we will be able to preach the word is if you know the word. The only way you're going to know the word is if you go and read the word. Preach the word. This is the charge. For us to preach his word to those around us, regardless of the situation. Regardless of the situation. Now, Paul gave us a who, which is us. Then he gave us a what to do, to preach the word. Then right after that, let's read about why. Why should we preach the word? Why should we take up this charge? Why should we take up this responsibility? Why should we even look at this burden and pick it up and put it on our shoulders? Why should we do it? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 says this, For the time will come when they will not endure around the sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled. They will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. And they will turn away their ears from the truth, and they will turn aside to myths. In other words... People will turn away from God and they only hear what they want to hear. They will take parts of the Bible and apply it to themselves and the parts that don't, they don't like, they won't apply it to them at all. And then when they find what they like, they go and find a religion, they go and find a teacher to go and teach them those things only. Not taking the whole word of God and applying it to them, but only a part of it. 
Paul said, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. Why? Because there will be, come a time when they will not endure truth, but rather want their ears tickled. There is a world out there who would rather hear a lie of comfort than I actually hear the truth of God. Some years back, someone asked the question, is truth relative? Is truth relative? Meaning, is truth related to you only? Is truth whatever you want it to be? And the answer that we came up with whenever we were talking to this about students is, that, is no, that truth is not relative. The truth can never be changed. The truth is not something we invent. It's something we discover. Your generation is at risk right now because the truth has been challenged greatly. It's been challenged at your school. It's been challenged at your home. It's been challenged at wherever you go. This is why. This is why we should preach the word and take up the charge Paul has put before us. The world needs Jesus. Your world needs Jesus. Your circle needs Jesus. The people around you at home need Jesus. The person next to you watching this message needs Jesus. You who are watching needs Jesus. And we need to read his word. It's time. Listen, it's not an easy thing. You're going to go, you're going against a culture that points you the other way. You're going against a culture that completely points to you rather than to him. You're going against a culture that rather points to you rather than him. It's not easy. But Christ called us to love God and to love the people around us. You want to see the people around you change? Tell them about Jesus. Paul ends this paragraph like this, verse 5. He says, But you... Be sober in all things, endure hardships, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, fulfill your ministry, fulfill your ministry. God has a plan and a purpose for all of this. Within that plan, he's tasked us to tell the world, hear me, youth. you make the digital age what it is. You drive the markets, you drive wherever we're gonna go. You realize that the only reason Snapchat exists is because of you. The only reason TikTok exists is because of you, because of your generation. The only reason Facebook and all these other social media platforms have gone so far is because of your generation. You guys drive that force. It's something our older generations can't do. All we can do is market and push towards you guys, but because you guys want it, it goes that way. You guys are so influential, you don't even know it. Do you imagine if we had a whole generation for Jesus, that same generation that influences all these platforms, they wanted to be so passionate about Christ and see where that goes. Think about it. It's your time. It's your age. We're communicating via a camera. We're communicating via social media. We're communicating via, via text and group text and all these different forms. The only way we can communicate right now is by phone, digitally. Through the internet, through Facebook, through all these different mediums that the only way that we can't even touch each other. It is your time to, to shine. It is your time to explode. Be passionate. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and Jesus Christ to preach the word, endure hardships, and fulfill your ministry. Fulfill the plan for your life. Would you take up this charge? Would you do something about it? God's been knocking at your door. Would you answer it? He's been calling you to do something great. Would you do it? Right where you are. Would you bow your heads? Let's pray. The Father, we thank you for being so good. We thank you, God, for allowing us to do this. We thank you, God, for allowing us. For, for, we thank you, Lord, for your word. God, I ask you, God, just like I asked before, that this word fall on good soil. And God, that that soil may, may flourish, God, and grow into something beautiful. God, like I asked you before, that this, this, this message fall on good ground. And that that seed may flourish and grow into something beautiful. You take care of it, Lord. You water it. You do what you need to do with it. God, help our hearts. Give us peace. If we lack wisdom, give it to us. If we lack knowledge, give it to us, God. God, whatever the plan is for us, I ask you, Lord, to show us where we need to go. You guide our steps. 
That we may search your scriptures, Father God, and that your word be a lamp unto our feet and guide us in the way we were supposed to go. God, the Father, if we go the wrong way, that you tell us to go this way, to go the right way. Guide us, God, and help us be sensitive to your voice. This is our time, Lord. We were made for such a time like this, Father God, to preach your word. Help us. Give us peace. Give us strength and courage to do what we need to do, God. We love you. We thank you, God, for everything you're doing. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for listening. If you haven't done so, subscribe, follow our channel. We have so much content that we're trying to push, we're trying to push forward. And then by you sharing what we do, we understand where we need to go. Spread the message. Share this with somebody. Show somebody what's going on. If something impacted you today, comment below. Tell us what's going on. Give us some feedback. And then until next week, we'll see you.